I have some really exciting news today. I finally got our sterilizer prototype in. So I'm gonna go over the details of that and what I'm gonna be doing over the next month. That's coming up next. I hope you guys are having a great day. We still got a lot of snow here on the farm. Just look at these snow drifts that are coming off the roof here. They're just crazy. Been a lot of snow this year. And uh, for me, it doesn't really matter because we shut down, but it's been, uh, it's been definitely a crazy winter. Um, so uh, today's video, I'm gonna talk about our sterilizer. This is really exciting. This just came in. This is a project that I, I kind of hinted on uh, back in the summer. And finally, uh, I've had time to get this finished. The design is pretty simple. Uh, starters, the, uh, the vessel is used in the wine industry. These, uh, these bins, these are uh, used for harvesting grapes. And this one I picked up really cheap. It's uh, been bashed around a lot. So I picked that up for $35, whereas uh, this one is brand new. With the lid, it was around $400. So I think the lid is about $100. But for us, this, uh, this allows us to be modular. So I'll go over the, the whole design here just to show you guys. But I hope you can appreciate how awesome this is and just how different this is than any steam tank you've ever seen before. So the starters, uh, to start off this video, for the lid, um, what I'm gonna do <clears throat> is I'm gonna still probably do the same seal on our tanks that we use here. So this is uh, a rope that you normally find in uh, like a wood burning stove that does radiant heat in your house. And they'll have these ropes that go in between the glass door and the furnace. So we've been playing around with a lot of different seals and this uh, this seems to be working the best. So we've adhered this with some silicone, played around with some different silicones and I have this white silicone that seems to be um, the best. And you know, you just have to trial uh, with what you have in your area. But one thing I note is you want to have a really clean surface and almost kind of scuff it up a bit with some sandpaper and then let that cure for 24 hours. So we're probably going to do the same here. I'm going to do a rope with silicone all along the edge here. And then the lid is going to go on and I'm probably just going to do a ratchet strap on two sides of the tank here. And that'll, that'll keep the lid down and, and hopefully sealed and no steam is going to escape. So that's, that's kind of the plan there. Now the work that I got done So that, that'll stay. This, uh, this screen is, uh, I'm, I'm still getting everything priced out, but this screen's actually really expensive. Uh, apparently there's only two places, I believe in North America, that do this uh, perforated uh, stainless, uh, I don't even know what you'd call it, but I think, uh, I think uh, the brew breweries use it to kind of strain out uh, the mash when they're making uh, beer. So we're using that as a, as a false bottom and we've, we have a steam coil that we put on the bottom here and essentially that holds the base and then the bags are going to stand on top of that. So we have these little base bottoms that hold the steam coil up and then we have 12 holes and the holes are drilled underneath so that steam is going to get pushed down towards the tank and and then and then up into the tank so these these little legs are holding the steam coil and then we have the uh the bottom that's going to then hold the bags in place everything's pretty strong so i think we're going to hold about 700 pounds and then we've designed a custom bulkhead here which is really cool. And again, I'm not sure how much this this is. It can't be that cheap. And it has a gasket inside. So I just got them to drill a hole in the tank and then the bulkhead is actually welded 
to the steam pipe here and then reconnects there and if you guys don't know what a bulkhead is all it's doing is is it's making sure that the hole that we've drilled into the tank is sealed with a gasket so there's no leaks and then i'm going to thread onto here all the the fittings i need to then connect to the boiler i'll just show you what we have here so this is our original setup with the 55 gallon barrels and right now this valve is actually attached to the uh, the steam barrels but we're looking to detach the uh, the steam tanks and then reattach new ones and kind of sterilize every day or every second day so this valve is actually going to change and it's going to get attached to the steam pipe header and then the union will get attached to the valve and then the union will attach to the valve and the, the the steam tank so in this case we'll have a union attached to this this steam tank as well so we're looking to have a union connection that's like a quick disconnect connection so that the tanks can detach and cool down in a designated area and then we can reattach new tanks and do a lot more production now I've talked about this in a lot of my uh, other vlogs. I'll link a video here how we talked about how important the cool down is. And in order for these bags not to contaminate, you need to let them cool down in the steam tank for, uh, for quite a long time. And the denser we fill these tanks, the longer they need to cool down. And we're looking to calibrate that with a uh, with a heat probe so we're just putting a probe into the center of the tank into the center of the bag and then that temperature uh, we we bring up to temperature about 200 Fahrenheit uh, when we're starting a batch and then that will run for about 15 hours that's kind of the starting point it can vary depending on how dense and how much nutrition are in the bags so I'm not going to get into that in this video but then when we're cooling down the uh, the temperature in the bag we're looking to hit about 70 to 90 fahrenheit before we actually touch and remove them out of the tank so that can that can be quite a long time especially when we're filling a vessel like this these uh these 55 gallon barrels at most can hold about 50 bags whereas this steam tank i need to figure it out but i'm hoping it's around 150 bags possibly more especially when we're getting into the smaller bags when we're doing the masters mix these are five pound bags uh, the wood chip bags they have uh, they probably sit up a little bit more maybe about two to three inches so they they use a lot more space so we're just kind of trying to figure out the max and min of uh, of this new design based on the substrate we're using but what's really cool is that when we're done production we're going to disconnect the union that's attached to that bulkhead and then we're just going to roll these bins probably just into the back there and if we have a forklift we could even stack bins on top of each other and allow them to cool down in series that way i'm not sure we're going to go the forklift route and really it's just because a forklift is going to be about ten thousand dollars so we're probably looking at putting this tank on some wheels and we'll get some nice really heavy duty wheels that spin all the way around so that we can just kind of wheel this around and we're looking to have them sorry about the mess guys we're, we're looking to probably store them right here and then we're going to come up with an efficient way to to wheel them to probably the the staircase uh, for the time being we might just put some plywood down and then eventually we're going to have our, our main lab in the back corner there and we're probably going to have a storage container right here which is going to be the cool down room and the tanks will just wheel into that room and then into that lab once we have the appropriate temperature that we're looking for so that's just kind of a quick a quick video on the tank so i mentioned i need to probably still attach some wheels to this i need to get some insulation we're probably looking at some kind of insulation panels that we can 
we can wrap around the tank when we're sterilizing and then take away to uh, kind of speed up the cool down process but also uh, the insulation uh, can get bulky so it's kind of nice to be able to take it away and I need to attach a plumber's drain on the bottom there we uh, this these totes they actually have a spot where you can thread the plastic so we've actually threaded in there and attached a uh, nipple a stainless uh, threaded nipple which we can then build on and attach a drain just like these tanks here so we use these plumbers drain attack attached to our tanks and this is really important because this allows water to drain out the tank but doesn't allow unclean air to get sucked back in so this is kind of like an air stop and water is just going to accumulate in the bottom here and then as water builds up in the tank it'll push it up and over the top just like how your bathroom uh, sink would work or, or your kitchen sink and in this case we're not looking for any gases to get trapped we're just trying to make sure that the uh, the air inside these tanks stays clean so that's that's something we need to still thread onto this bin here as well oh and the other thing uh, that we've changed in this is that these tanks steam from the top we have a temperature gauge pressure relief and a uh, 5 30 second vent and that's going to be completely obsolete in uh, the lid we're not going to do anything with the new tank we're just going to be steaming actually out of this plumber's drain so not only is this going to drain out excess water but excess steam is going to get pushed out as well anyways guys i hope you found this helpful that is the update on our new steam tank sterilization design once we get this figured out um, we're going to mass produce this and probably have at least four of these working in series this year and, and still using these, ste these steam tanks we have here as well. And then as, as we have more money, we'll, we'll slowly add more of these tanks to the system. And I need to figure out how many tanks can run off of these boilers. So we're gonna, we're gonna start with two running in, in series, and then we'll increase that to three and four, and we'll see exactly what these boilers can handle. And that'll kind of determine what capacity we can do. But this is all really exciting stuff. Um, we're into the prototype design for this right now at $1,600 um, for, and, and $400 for the bin. So it's about a $2,000 project right now. And it is a prototype design so that that means that the costs will get cheaper and we just need to, we need to figure out with uh, our manufacturer what exactly they can do now that we have the idea how, how can we cut costs and, and how many do we need to make to, to have that, that kind of price break. So I'm still trying to figure that out. But just to put it in perspective, one of these stainless bins, they cost us $2,000. And they're, they're just repurposed 55-gallon barrels, but you're paying for all the, the TIG welding. It's about 100 bucks an hour and, uh, and the design with all the work that was put into these. So these tanks can only hold 50 bags. Whereas this one is probably going to be anywhere between three and four times the volume of these. So even if this, even if this new design is $2,000, which I know we're going to get it cheaper, it still is going to output so much more than these tanks. So either way, I'm so stoked with the direction we're headed. And what it allows us to do is, is do a little bit of volume every day and it makes the work on the farm bearable you know a lot of farms they they like to head towards a big steam box and they'll produce like a thousand bags but doing a thousand bags in one shot you're going to need a big crew you're going to need to automate your 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 production so that you can do that kind of volume and for us when we're just kind of working at stuff every day it's really nice to have the option to do small batches it allows us to stagger production throughout the greenhouses but for for our goals right now it's going to allow us to do uh, about 800 bags into a greenhouse within two to three days so this this is going to allow us to do a lot more volume uh, in in a in a specific batch compared to what 
we can do right now. And that's going to translate into our months being a lot more profitable than they were in the past. So anyways, guys, I hope you found this helpful. Um, that's what's going on right now. Got lots more videos coming out. We'll talk to you later.